Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a watercolour stripe pattern in Photoshop. Before we begin I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare you get access to thousands of classes there including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family and friends. Let's return to Photoshop because I want to show you what the issue is in creating these patterns. This image was sent to me by one of my subscribers who asked that when they were trying to create a watercolour stripe pattern they had this issue. They had obvious lines through the pattern and this is what we're going to look at today. So let's go and have a look and see where I sourced my watercolours from first of all. I go to VecDeasy.com. I find it's pretty handy for getting access to the kind of things that you might need. If you've already painted your watercolour stripe that's just fine, use that. But I came here and just grabbed a set of stripes. Now the ones I grabbed actually had some text on them and they were a vector so I'm not going to introduce you to those because they didn't work particularly well. I had to do a lot of work to prepare them but just make sure that you get something that doesn't have text through it. Make sure it's fairly straight and fairly sort of even straightness all the way through. That will just help you get a better result. So something like this would be pretty good. So let's return to Photoshop and here are the stripes that I got out of that VecEasy set of stripes. And as I said, I came via Illustrator and I did actually create them as a transparent ping. So this is a transparent ping image with a transparent background. But if you weren't so lucky, this is what you're going to do. I'm actually going to merge these together so we have just a single layer and the white is baked into this shape. So what we're going to do is place a transparent layer below this shape layer here. Click on this shape layer, the one that's got the white and the brush strokes. And you're going to go to the FX icon and choose blending options. What we're going to do here is we're going to use these blend off options. And we're just going to drag on this top slider. Hold the Alt or Option key to split the slider in two. And all you're looking for is a good result. You want to drop the white out of this image. You want to leave the paint strokes behind. So that is a pretty good result for me. I'll click OK. Next we want to merge this down. So we're going to select this topmost layer and press Control or Command E or choose Layer Merge Layers this option down here to merge it to the layer below because you need a transparent layer and then you can just test it by placing a white filled layer underneath it. So here's my white, here's my paint bucket, check it looks okay, it's just fine. So that is a way of isolating these watercolour paint strokes so that all you've got is the paint because that's what we want for this project. So let's go and select this top layer, go to the marquee tool and I've determined that what I'm going to work with is these three shapes here. So nothing else, just those three. So let's just select over those. I'll choose Edit and then Copy Merged. I'll choose File New. Click here on the clipboard because that's the size document we're going to create and then choose Edit Paste. So that should paste your stripes in. Now I find it easier to work with vertical stripes than horizontal so I'm going to rotate mine. Image, image rotation, clockwise 90 degrees. Now you can do that or not as you please. As I said, it's just that it makes better sense to me. I'm going to turn off the background. We're going to focus on this layer. And what we're going to do is cut it in half. So we're going back to the marquee tool. You're going to drag over the top half of this set of shapes. And then you'll choose layer, new, layer via cut. And over here in the last panel, you'll see that you've split your shape. So there's a top bit and a bottom bit. What we're going to do is bring the top bit here all the way down to the bottom of the artboard. So you'll hold the shift key because it has to travel in a perfectly vertical direction and just drop it at the bottom here. Then go back and get the other layer. You can turn this layer off if you need to and move this to the top. Again holding shift because you have to move it in an exactly vertical direction. Now you can see that we've got a big gap in the middle here. What we're going to do is go and get the one that we just moved, this top one. Again holding shift, we're just going to drag it down now so that it sort of overlaps the pieces at the bottom because what we're going to do is join them up at this point. 
So having done that, let's go to the crop tool and let's just bring the crop rectangle down so it sits immediately across the top of this shape and let's crop it. So the next thing we need to do is to blend these in so that we create some stripes. It might be easier to do that with the white background visible. What I'm going to do is add a brand new layer at the top of this document and then I'm going here to the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to select the clone stamp tool. I'm going to choose sample current and below and so what we're going to do is sample from the current layer and this immediately below layer so we can't get color from here but we can get color from here so I'll hold the alt or option key as I click here to get some color and then I'm just going to start painting over it now I can vary the size of my brush and get more of the color at a time And what you're looking to do is to seamlessly blend this. Now you may find that changing the opacity helps. Now I already had that opacity much lower. Let me just show you what happens when I have it at full opacity. You'll see that sort of operates a bit more like paint and that may not be what you want. I think that operating at somewhere between 75 and 50% opacity will actually give you a better result. Just get a sort of smoother look to the painting that you're doing. You can also experiment with having a line turned on and not turned on as you will get different results with that. And so you're going to come over here and just repeatedly copy and paste or use your clone stamp tool to try and even out the middle where these lines join. Now this could take quite a while. And you can also go and change the settings for the clone stamp tool. You may want to bring in everything. So you could sample all layers, which will give you a bit more flexibility. You can actually sample some of the content from the layer that's sort of two below, if you like. You can change your brush size. And here I'm going to increase the opacity, make a much smaller brush size, pick up these sort of stripe colors and try and sort of bring them into this here but here you really will be using sort of your artistic sensibilities to try and cover up these joins here the problem with this join is that it's on an angle so let me just zoom out a little bit and you can see that there's a sort of angle issue here how you'll solve that one of the methods you could do is to borrow some of this edge here so what I'm going to do is go and grab this edge. I know it's coming predominantly from this layer here. So I'll copy it and then I'll paste it. And that will paste into a new layer. Here it is on a new layer. And I can just bring it in here and try and place it. They just move it to the top of the layer stack here and place it along this edge maybe rotate it a little bit so that potentially it will form an edge along the side here. Now having done that, I can come in here and just erase the bits that I don't want, sort of erase and soften these edges. If I soften down my eraser so it's got sort of zero hardness and also use an eraser that's a little bit sort of fluffier if you like then we might be able to sort of blend this in so using an edge from this shape to actually recreate an edge that we didn't have now you're going to continue to work on that i'm going to call this good right for now so i'm going to select everything with select and all and then edit define pattern now this is not going to be a particularly good result, but let's try it so we see what the problems are going to be. I'm going to create a larger document, this case 3600 by 3600 pixels in size. I'll use layer, new fill layer and pattern. Click OK and the most recent pattern that we have created will be used to fill a document. Well, you can see that I haven't made a really good job of this seamlessness, but that is just something that you just have to continue to work with. But you'll see also that these lines are not even. So let's go back to the shape we were working with, which is here. I'm going to merge everything down at this stage. So I'm just pressing Control or Command E until I have all these lines on a separate layer, just one layer. Now I'm going to go and grab 
this side here and jump it to its new layer, layer new, layer via cut. So I've got one stripe on one layer. Let's go back here and let's go and get this stripe and put it on its own layer, layer new, layer via cut. Having done that, we can then move these outside ones in slightly. What we're looking for is for this distance plus whatever's here to roughly equal what's here. And it's not right now. So let's just move this in. I think this is going to look better. Let's select everything, edit, define pattern, go back to the master document that we're working in, double click here and go to the very last pattern, which will be the one that we just created. You can see here now that everything is much more even. Now, another thing that you can do is if you still have these sort of lines in the middle and in this case, all the lines were at the same point. Well, what we could do is move those around as well. Let's turn off two of these stripes. Let's just focus on one stripe. I'm going to the marquee tool and this time I'm going to carve off quite a bit of this stripe. So I'm going to break it into a piece that's this long and a piece that's this long. Layer new layer via cut. So I've got two pieces of this shape and what I'll do is just exactly as I did before. I'm going to move the top one holding the shift key down to the bottom edge of the document. I'll go to the other one, the little piece, hold the shift key, move it up to the top edge of the document. And so now we've moved our bad join or the sort of more obvious join elsewhere in the document. And so when we select everything, and make a pattern out of it and then use it in our document. You see that we're breaking up that very obvious line across here because the joins are in a slightly different place. Here's the join, here's the join. And you could go back and do that with another one of these lines. Let's just join these two back up again. We're just going to right click and choose merge down. So we've got one stripe over here, which is the one we just fixed. Let's go to this stripe and do the same thing with it. I'm going to go and get just the top bit, jump it to a new layer, layer new layer via cut. Let's turn off this bit. Let's go and get this bit. Again, shift, drag it up to the very top of the document, go and get the little missing bit, shift, drag it down to the bottom of the document, turn everything back on, join these two back together by merging down and then select everything and go and make a pattern again. It's really worthwhile making your patterns as you go along so that you can see just how bad things are and where the obvious problems are because you really only have to fix the really obvious problems. So here we've got a much more seamless look to our pattern just by offsetting those joins. And we don't have the lines that the person who sent me that image was concerned about. We don't have these obvious lines. Our lines look different. Just looks a bit more blobby if you like. Now there's another thing that you can do with this pattern piece that will help as well. I'm going to image and image size because I want to read off how big this design is and I want the width because that's how my stripes are running. So the width is 784. Let me just cancel out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the width of this document. I'll go to image canvas size. I'm going to click here so that I move these pieces across to this side of the document. I've got relative selected. I'm going to add that same value back again, 784 in width. Now I want the background to be white. So I'm going to select white from this list here and let's just click OK. So now I have three stripes and I've got room for another three stripes. So let's go and get all these three stripes. Let's drag them onto the new icon here. I've got all three of them here and selected. Let's rotate them or do something with them. Let's choose edit, transform and let's flip them vertically. And then I'm going to move them across the document. So they're a little bit different to the first three stripes because they've been flipped. But now we have six stripes for our pattern. Select all, edit, define pattern. Go back to our document, double click on this fill layer, go and grab the last pattern and here we have 
a different pattern again. In this case, the joins are offset even more because we've got six stripes. So this join here is not repeated until we get all the way over here. And you could even make nine stripes. You can do whatever you like, but that is a way of creating a striped watercolor pattern in Photoshop, avoiding the problem that our subscriber had where they've got obvious lines and instead joining things up. And of course, the better job you do on these joins, the less obvious it's going to be that that's what you've done. I hope this video has been of help to you and you learned something about working in Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.